Uh, this one comes from an agent, and the question is as follows. Uh, the Homeowners Association has in its rules that a tenant must supply their lease, pay slips, bank statements, and credit report for their biometrics. Uh, has anybody heard of this, and is it actually legal? Bruno? Sure. So it's, it's, it's a very interesting question because we're finding that body corporates and homeowners associations are implementing rules and processes in order to govern uh, entry onto uh, on site and onto premises. And so just to give a brief history um, as to um, as some of the examples that we've seen recently, it, uh, especially with things like Airbnb, right? Um, or not Airbnb, let's not say Airbnb, but short-term accommodation or short-term rentals, is body corporates and HOAs were finding that that excess traffic of people were causing um, uh, causing certain issues. Now, in, 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 there's been court cases and there's been conversations where the HOA and the body corporate was trying to stop uh, short-term rentals uh, for other reasons. So, for example, in, in one instance, we, we received word that because the um, body corporate was running its own kind of hotel setup, that it didn't want competition from short term on a short term basis. So it tried to limit and because it had a majority rule over the body corporate, it tried to limit other people from doing Airbnbs. Um, but then in other examples, and this specifically, if memory serves, was what the court case was about, there was a security component to it. So the justification behind limiting an owner's um, use of the property um, to any use that it wants. Now, the body corporate was trying to limit it because it was saying that from a security perspective, it's unsafe to have unknown uh, tenants entering and exiting the property on a daily basis, on a short term basis, without having sufficient information as to who they are, to the degree that the court upheld that it was OK for a body corporate or a HOA to make that sort of decision. Uh, because it, there was a justifiable component to it. Now, the problem is when people read this case, everyone panicked going, oh, no, Airbnbs aren't allowed. It's not about that. It's about the reasoning behind it. And the rules that the body corporate and the HOA make, remember, these aren't just any rules that one person makes and binds everyone, right? These are these are rules that at an AGM, you start having conversations around, what are the uses of the property? Is there a majority vote that this is the best for this particular community? So in itself, it almost, I mean, best analogy is it works like a little country within a country. Uh, the same way that there's a democratic vote with majority rules, where you appoint people to make decisions on your behalf. This is all done by the specific owners themselves. So the owners subject themselves to this environment where they understand that the body corporate will impose rules, fines for parking in the wrong space, a whole range of things in the, for the general protection of the community as a whole, right? That's, that's the ideology behind body corporates and HOAs. It's a common purpose and everyone kind of decides what the best common purpose is and majority rules. The problem here is that there were a lot of abuses because um, you'd have one owner that owned the majority of a complex, as an example. And our legislation has then subsequently changed and CSOS was introduced to have a look at rules uh, made by body corporates with the intention of protecting minority owners. So there is recourse if you approach CSOS as an example, although their power to implement is, is a bit iffy and the courts have ruled that for a justifiable reason, the HOA would be permitted to make rules regarding um, or rather in the protection of the community for security purposes. So now going back to this particular question, is it justifiable uh, that a body corporate asks for all this information? There's no set answer. It is a gray area. What does it need the information for, right? Can it justify the use of the information? So, for example, if part of this was a blood sample, I would go, obviously not, because, I mean, there's absolutely no reason 
uh, that you can justify somebody giving you a blood sample. But if it's a question of an ID document, why? ID document is identification. I mean, just to log into Airbnb, you need uh, to upload your identification. So it, it kind of makes sense that an ID document is important. Things like proof of address, well, yet people need to be able to find you if something goes wrong. They want to know that you exist, that you're an actual person, that you stay somewhere, um, and that you're not a fly-by-night. And bear in mind, count yourself lucky because in many occasions, uh, they actually limit body corporates or the, the actual community from having short term accommodation. So if this is for a long term tenant and all they want is to ensure that you're placing a tenant that you've properly vetted onto the property, count yourself lucky. Now, the only other thing that I need to forewarn everyone on is can this information actually be shared? It can, but with the tenant's consent. So when you're doing your vetting, presuming this is long-term accommodation, when you're doing your vetting, make sure that when they sign the document permitting you to do the vetting, which they have to, by the way, uh, it also allows you to share this information with the homeowners association and make sure that they consent to that. Otherwise, you're, you're not actually permitted to share it. And then the homeowner association is going to limit you on letting this tenant in. And then you've got like a three-way fight because everyone has rights against the other and no one can really enforce them because of other limitations. So just make sure I wouldn't worry too much about it. Just make sure that the person actually consents and you as a landlord or agent, you're good. You, at least you've, uh, you've played your part. 100%. So, yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Bruno. Uh, very good insight and detail into that question. And that does uh, bring us to the end of today's episode. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you guys again next week. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Cheers.